mass 5.6 exponent 5 kilogram so that is the mass of the train and initially at rest at the station at time t is equals to 0 second the resultant force acting on the train and its accelerate forward uh, figure 1.1 is a distance time graph for the train for first 20 seconds so distance time graph is there for distance time graph we can find two things the average speed and the actual speed average speed is the total distance over total time and actual speed by finding the gradient by finding the gradient we can find the average uh, actual speed so use the figure 1.1 determine the average speed so how we can uh, find the average speed of a train during the uh, 120 second so average speed is the total distance over total time so total distance is equals to 4800 and the total time it will take that is 4800 divided by 120 that will give us the average speed slope we use for the actual speed the speed at particular moment or instantaneous speed or velocity but for average speed it is simply total distance over total time that's equal to 40. the next part they're asking the speed of a train when time is equals to 100 seconds so we need the actual speed the speed at this moment so what we will do we will draw a tangent we will first mark a point where the time is equals to 100 so first we mark a point where time is equals to 100 so this is a straight line till means in this region this part is a straight so using the formula for gradient y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 we can find the gradient or the slope and the slope here will give us the actual speed so it's up to you but that you have to take for the straight part not for the curve because the curve part means the speed is changing so using you can take the values like example this is 80 and the respective value and same thing if you took because this whole region it is straight so that is 120 and the final it was 480 4800 so this was 4800 uh, this one is each box stands for 100 so 2100 234 so 2400 this is 80 120 so y2 minus y1 which is 4800 minus 2400 divided by x2 minus x1 so 120 minus 80 so you will get the speed at 100 second the next part describe how the acceleration of a train at time t is equals to 100 second differ from acceleration at time t is equals to So when we compare the the term acceleration means the change in speed. So what is happening for in, uh, in 20 seconds, the slope is changing. Here you can see the slope changes. And what slope represents? Slope represents speed. So if slope is changing, it means the speed is also changing. For So in 20 seconds, the speed was changing. But at, so the object, the train was accelerating. But what about this part as the slope is constant so the term constant slope means the speed is also constant and if the speed is constant it means it is not accelerating or acceleration is zero so when we compare the two parts for at like uh, 20 seconds it was accelerating because there was a change in speed but at 100 second it was moving with a constant speed so acceleration was zero so when we compare those acceleration at 20 seconds it was changing the speed 
so accelerating where at 100 seconds it is moving with constant speed so acceleration is because when the speed is constant the acceleration is zero the next part initial acceleration of a train is 0 0.75 use uh, this to calculate the resultant force. So how we can find the resultant force? So we have the formula F is equals to MA. So force is equals to mass multiplied by acceleration. The mass is given 5.6 into 10 power 5 and the acceleration is 0.75. So when we use this formula, we'll get the acceleration. This F should be capital, which represents the force. At time 120 second, the train begins to decelerate. What is the meaning of deceleration? Negative acceleration or the term deceleration means the speed or velocity will decrease. If speed or velocity decrease, negative acceleration you can also write or you can mention speed or velocity decrease. We call that as deceleration. In this question, figure 2.1 shows a uniform plank of length AB uh, of a uniform plank AB of length two meters suspended by two ropes X and Y. So there are two ropes X and Y. The force on rope X is P and the force on rope Q is uh, B is Q. Uh, sorry, Y is Q. The weight of the plank is 210 Newton. The force in a rope X is P and Y is Q. In terms of P, the moment of force about B. When they say about B, so what is our pivot? The pivot is B. So in terms of in terms of moment like the pivot B, what is the moment caused by P? So P is the force. So moment is the product of force into distance. So force is P. Multiply by distance. What is the distance from the pivot? That is equals to 1.5. So P into 1.5. Then the moment of W about B. So what is the moment of W about B? As I mentioned this, that the weight of a plank is 210 Newton. And it's a uniform plank. So if it's a uniform plank, so if some uniform, the so weight will act at the center. The total length of the plank is two meters. So this length will be one meters. Because it's a uniform plank, so weight will act at the center. In this part, they're saying calculate the moment of W about B. So moment is force multiplied by distance. The force is 210. And the distance is only one. So 210 multiplied by one. So it will be 210. Newton meter. The next part, calculate the force P. So if you want to calculate the force P as B is our point of rotation or B is the pivot. So the moment caused by the weight is same as the moment caused by force P, which is uh, applied on rope X. So we can say the two moments are balanced or so the two moments will be same. So simply we can say or write an expression. The moment of the P was P into 1.5 and the moment due to the weight was 210. So we need the force. So P will be equal to 210 uh, divided by 1.5. So that's equal to 140 Newtons. Because the clockwise moment and anti-clockwise moment will be same. The next part, the force Q, how to work out force Q. So we know this is 140, which is upward. We know this is 210 downward. So what should be the force Q? Because the upward force to be in equilibrium, the upward force balances with the downward force. So P plus Q is equals to 210.
So sum of the two forces should be equal to 210. P already we worked out which is 114 to X is equals to 210. So when we solve, we'll get this as 70 newtons. The rope, this is an unknown X. This X is not about the force, this is about the unknown X. The next part, when it's a curve, uh, Mohsin, when it's a curve, uh, it can be a constant acceleration, it can be a variable acceleration. That depends on how the inner, how the slope is changing. Even like example, if I have a, uh, say, speed, a distance line graph, so both are representing the change in the velocity. Both graphs are representing, but one is having a constant change, like rate of change is constant. Another one is having a variable change. So this will show a constant acceleration. This will show a variable acceleration. Even the curve in a distance time graph may shows that object having a constant or variable acceleration. So according to what is meant by conservation of energy, law of conservation of energy, energy cannot be created nor be destroyed, but changes from one form to another. So energy can be created nor be destroyed, but changes from one form to another. That's an important thing. Then figure 3.1 shows a girl throwing a heavy ball state the energy chain that takes place from when the girl began to exert a force on the ball until the ball hits the ground and stop moving. So what are the energy changes as a girl is throwing a ball, a heavy ball? So first she's having a chemical energy, then the ball, as the ball will move, the chemical energy changes to kinetic energy, then the ball will rise to certain height that will have potential and then the ball is coming down again potential changes to kinetic and it will stop so it will turn into heat energy but it should be complete uh, your answer is not complete uh, hashim it should be like first she's having a chemical energy which changes to kinetic as the ball moves then to potential as the ball rises to certain height. As it will come down, the potential, the gravitational potential change to kinetic. Then that kinetic energy change, when it hits the ground and stop, so that converted into sound and internal energy. In the next part, the ball of mass four kilogram, the girl exert a force on the ball for 0.6 seconds, the speed of the ball increases from 0 to 12 before it leaves the girl's hand. The momentum of the ball on leaving, so momentum is a product of mass and velocity. Always write the formula first and then substitute the value. So mass multiplied by velocity as it leaves, that's 12, so it will be equal to 48. 
kilogram meter per second or it can be newton second the average force so how to get a force you can use the change in for momentum divided by time or you can use this formula f is equals to ma both will give you the same answers but this formula to use this formula first i should get the acceleration what is the acceleration the change in velocity is 12 minus 0 and the time interval is 0 0.6 that will give a acceleration and multiplied by the mass so it will be 12 divided by 0 0.6 which is equals to 80 newton this is one way to get this there is also another way to get the answer as we know uh, the resultant force is equal to rate of change in momentum so it is mv minus mu divided by t i can simply substitute this one is u this is v this is m time is there when i substitute i will also get the same answer impulse is force multiplied by time yeah that's a formula so our impulse when the initial or final momentum is zero the impulse is same as the change in the momentum which is or equal to one of the momentum in this question figure 4.1 shows a liquid in a cylinder the depth of the liquid is 10 centimeter the radius of the cylinder is 3 centimeter the weight of the liquid is 2.5 calculate the density of the liquid so density is mass present in unit volume so to get the density first we need the mass so how to get the mass the weight is given so divided by w is equals to mg so mass is equals to weight divided by gravity so weight is equals to 2.5 and the gravity on earth that's you have to take as 10 so the mass is 0 0.25 kilogram then because it is a cylinder so what is the formula for volume of cylinder that is pi r square h so pi is 3.14 r is the radius but that is in centimeter you have to convert into meter so it will be 0 0.03 square multiplied by height that is 10 centimeter again we have to convert into meter so which is 0 0.1 uh, what is the volume here when you sub calc 3.14 multiplied by 0 0.03 square multiplied by 0 0.1 so volume is 2.8 exponent minus 4 the volume is 2.8 into 10 power minus 4 but you need a density which is mass over volume so mass is 0 0.25 and the volume is 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 4 and you substitute these values the final answer will be eight eighty four kilogram per meter cube or 890 kilogram per meter or yes in gram per centimeter cube The next part figure shows a device that measure the pressure of the gas supply. State the name of this device. What we call this? A manometer and the purpose of this device is used to find the gas pressure. As you can see here, the gas pressure is higher than the atmospheric pressure. That's why it is having a difference in the level. The pressure is applying the atmospheric pressure applied from the right hand side. The liquid pressure applied from the right hand side and the gas pressure applied from the left hand side. The difference between the edge of the two liquid is two centimeter, but that is called a barometer. The device which is used to measure the atmospheric pressure that's barometer. So in the question, this height is two centimeter. The density of a liquid is 800. Calculate the difference between the pressure of the gas and atmosphere. Basically, difference between the pressure of gas and atmosphere means the liquid pressure. Because look, this side, you have the gas pressure. And the other side, you have atmospheric pressure. 
and the liquid pressure. So when I write the expression, when I write the equation here, which relate these pressures. So according to this equation, the pressure of the gas is equals to pressure of the liquid plus pressure of atmosphere. If I move pressure of atmosphere other side, it means the pressure of gas minus pressure of the liquid is e minus pressure of the atmosphere is equals to pressure of liquid. So means the difference in the gas pressure and atmospheric pressure is actually the liquid pressure and they're asking for liquid pressure to calculate the liquid pressure, its density, gravity and depth. So you multiply all these factors, you will get the liquid pressure or the pressure difference, which is 160 Pascal. A similar device with a tube is smaller cross sectional areas connected to a gas supply at the same pressure. State and explain any difference in height. So if I use a narrow manometer, how it will affect the difference in the height? The difference in the height will not change, but what will happen? The liquid will rise in both columns. The amount of the liquid will rise in both columns, but the the difference in the height will remain unchanged or same. So liquid will rise in both columns, but the difference in the height, this H will not change. It is only affected when the either atmospheric pressure changes or even the gas pressure change. So same level will be there. Uh, the difference will be same, but the level of the liquid will rise in both columns. Yeah, that's right. There is no change in value of H. So the H will remain same. Yes, any question, Hashim? The H will remain same, but the liquid level will rise in both columns. As you can see, when you have a narrow tube, like this H is two centimeter, it will remain two centimeter. But the liquid will rise in the both columns. So where the liquid will rise in both columns, the difference in the height will remain same as it was originally because that depends on the pressure of the gas supply. In a space below draw a uh, in a space below draw a label diagram of structure of a thermocouple include the de device from which readings are taken. So you can use a screen annotation for this to draw the thermocouple. And it should be labeled like mentioned the hot and the cold junctions. As well as the wires as well, the label the wires which material they are made up of as well as the device which we use to
Okay, so that's right. You don't have to, uh, it's not necessary you show the arrows, even just label the wires, that's enough. No need to show the movement of the particle. Okay, thank you for your participation. Then the next question, a thermocouple is used to measure the temperature of a flame of a small candle. State two reasons why a thermocouple is it suitable for this application? Like why recording a temperature of a flame? So basically the advantage of a thermocouple It can record a very high temperature. It is responsive. Yeah, it is very responsive and can measure very high temperature. That's right. Give it accurate measurement. And it can also be for remote sensing, right? What is the meaning of remote sensing means if object is far away from you, you can use a thermocouple to measure its temperature. Just the one of the probe you have to place on the object and far away from the object, you can measure the temperature. So it can also be used for remote sensing. State and explain any effect on the sensitivity of a liquid in a glass thermometer. Reducing a diameter of the capillary. If you use a thinner capillary, will it affect the sensitivity? So yes, it will affect, it will make it more sensitive. As a liquid can travel a greater distance. Increasing the volume of the liquid in the bulb. Like if you use a larger bulb. So bulb of a thermometer is changed. If you use a larger bulb, that will also increase or make it more sensitive because more greater the amount of liquid, it will have a greater expansion. State three factors that determine the rate of evaporation. The temperature, surrounding temperature, surface area, wind speed, drought, air movement. Yeah, that's right. The drought, surrounding temperature, humidity, temperature of the liquid. Temperature of the surrounding already I mentioned. Then the next question, a person climb out of a swimming pool and stand in the open air. Explain why evaporation of water from a surface of a person's body cause a person to feel cold. So why a person will feel cold? Because the most energetic molecules at the surface of the liquid gain energy from surrounding from the body and escape. So the molecules which are left behind will have less energy. That's why the temperature decrease. As the temperature decrease, that's why evaporation is a cooling process. So evaporation help in Particle gain energy from the body and evaporate. That's one mark. And the second mark is they, the particle, because the thing is you have to mention the cool down, uh, like body cool down. So you have to mention what happened that the molecules which are left behind, they have low energy. So that's why it is a cooling process.
the next part a laser a laser beam uh, a laser produce a beam of monochromatic light what is the meaning of monochromatic light of single frequency single wavelength but don't write single color because the term single color is not valid scientifically so it should be single wavelength or single frequency The next part, the wave in the air is incident on the glass as shown. The wave front are at the air and the glass boundary are there. The arrow shows the direction of the wave travel. So what you have to do in this part, a wave undergo a reflection and refraction. At the air glass boundary draw the wave front reflected and refracted. So first thing what you should do you should complete the arrow to show how the reflection happened. So this is the incident one and the reflected one will be there. Then draw the reflected wave front and keep one thing in mind that the direction of the wave front should be perpendicular to the direction of the wave and the wavelength should also be same. The wavelength should not change. And when it travel from air to glass, it will bend towards the normal. So the wavelength will decrease. So you will draw a shorter wavelength as it slow down. So re reflection and refraction you have to show. Yeah, that's right. No need to draw extra wave fronts here. They already gave, don't need to draw this part. They are already gave, so you just have to complete the previous one, which is given to you. The next part, a transverse wave is produced in a long horizontal rope. The rope is much longer than the wavelength. Uh, the rope is uh, much longer than the wavelength of the wave in a space below sketch a diagram show appearance of the rope as wave passes along and label the two important feature of the wave so we have to draw a transverse wave draw a transverse wave here not the longitudinal the transverse and label the features of the wave this is uh, not the transverse this you are drawing a longitudinal transverse wave in which the wave the vibration perpendicular that's right so a transverse wave you can label two features you can mention amplitude you can mention wavelength or you can mention crest and trough system you can use other spaces if you want to you can use the other space it's not necessary that on the same space you draw so one is a wavelength another one is amplitude yeah that's right amplitude is half of the wavelength means uh, it's half of the wave height not the wavelength like example if this is a total wave height from top to bottom the half of that is called amplitude i'll share another link and continue this discussion i'll discuss question 8 and onwards